Hey guys, how you doing? It's Terry Kern here, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about carving in relief. Um, carving in relief is one of the things that I love to do most when I'm working with clay. Uh, as you know, when you carve in relief, you want your piece to be leather hard, which is the stage between wet and bone dry. It can be really easy for your piece to get dried out when you're carving in relief because the air that's circulating your piece is evaporating um, all the moisture out of your clay. So a couple of tips that I use to make sure my clay stays nice and moist as I'm carving is, number one, I'll take a piece of plastic and put my piece of plastic and then put the whole thing, the piece of the plastic, on a wear board. The second thing that can happen is if I'm working down here, the area up here is open to the air and again that, that um, uh, moisture from the clay is evaporating so I'll just take my spray bottle, I'll give it a quick spritz of water and then I'll cover the sections I'm not working on in plastic. That's another way to keep that moisture content exactly where you want it which is in your piece of clay. So the other thing that I love to do when I'm carving relief is I like to put my piece, like if it's a flat piece, on my banding wheel so that I can turn my piece as I need to when I'm carving with my carving tools. That can really help you with your control of your tools and things like that. Um, the other thing that I'm going to talk to you about briefly before I show you this relief carving is tools. Like you, there's, of course, there's all kinds of great clay tools that are made for carving in clay. But you can also find other things. Um, this is actually a metal stencil that I got at Michael's um, from a former life where I was going to be making um, stenciled Christmas cards, which never happened, but that's another story. Anyway, what I found out is that this stencil is, number one, it's flexible and the edge is super sharp. So I use these metal stencils on my pieces to carve on my relief, um, on my relief carving to get large areas where there's not any kind of texture. So, you know, look for interesting things in your house or your studio that you are thinking might be used for clay, but can actually be used for clay. Um, the other thing that I like to do is I wrap my tools with um, insulation foam. I spend a lot of hours carving and the pressure that my fingers are exerting on my tools can be pretty intense. So I really save my hands and, and help protect my muscles and my bones by wrapping the tools I use the most in insulation foam so that it hurts less uh, at the end of a long day of carving. So I hope these little tips help you when you're doing your relief carving and I hope you'll sit back and enjoy the show. I hope you enjoyed watching that time-lapse video of me working on this hand-carved piece of clay. I just want to give you a quick reality check and let you know that that time-lapse video in reality took about 30 minutes to create. So just think about that when you're working on your pieces. And then the last thing I want to leave you with is just a health and safety tip that I forgot to mention earlier in the video. And that's that whenever I'm carving, I have a little container of water. And as I'm carving and I have all the clay shards, I use a, a brush to brush them off the surface of my piece. And I brush them into this little container. And what happens is those little particles of clay, as they dry, aren't just sitting on my table. They're actually captured by water. And that keeps the dust particles from floating up into the air where I might breathe them in. So again, um, just a little health and safety tip from me to you. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this time-lapse video and that you guys have a great and productive day in your studios.